Thank you. Let's be seated, please. Program Director, Your Excellency, President Dr. William Ruto, Ministers from both our countries, South Africa and Kenya, business leaders who are here present uh, with us. I'd like to convey my joy and my special thanks to you, my dear brother, for inviting myself and my delegation to come to your beautiful country, but more especially as your first state visitor guest uh, during the first part of your presidency. Thank you very much. You've given us more than a warm welcome to Kenya. Having been to Kenya a number of times, this has been a very special visit, largely because of the manner in which the discussions between our two delegations has really, have really gone to great success and to new heights. Your country is not only known for the stunning beauty of uh, this great country, but it is also known as a powerful economy in East Africa. And we see South Africa and Kenya having a symbiotic relationship in a number of areas. There's so much that we have in common, that we share. Our value system is very similar. The principles that we uphold, very, very similar. We're democratic, and you are too. You uphold human rights, so do we. Your governance structures, institutions, and processes are really outstanding. So there's much that binds us together as the two countries, and we are overjoyed with that. And our visit to you comes at a time when the world is facing enormous challenges, and we've just been recovering from COVID-19, and that too was an enormous challenge. I just want to speak on some of the issues and reiterate and endorse what President Ruto has just been saying, particularly about the enormous opportunities that we have on our continent in relation to our positioning in the world, in relation to our population as a continent, and in relation to the youthfulness of our population and also get us to look back where we've come from. We are a continent that is quite resilient. Sometimes we browbeat ourselves into uh, helplessness and submission and all that. I've always enjoyed President Museveni's take on our continent when he says, we are a continent of resilient people because we are survivors. We survived the most brutal form of uh, punishment that was ever exerted on a people in the history of the world, colonialism. And they sought to wipe us out and to destroy us, but we survived. And we have emerged as independent countries, proud of our identities and surging forward. I mentioned COVID advisedly because as the world was gripped by this massive pandemic, as a continent we were able to distinguish ourselves in the manner in which we approached and we addressed COVID. We were the only continent that during this horrific pandemic were able to unite and to act 
as a continent in an integrated manner. If you ever want to talk about African integration, I saw it with my own eyes during COVID, when right at the outset of the pandemic, we developed a strategy, an African strategy of how to address and to approach COVID. And no other continent that I know of, even to a little extent Europe, was able to develop as good a strategy as we did. And that spoke to our integration. And we lived up to the strength, the resilient strength and possibly hidden strength that we have as Africans who have survived a whole lot of other terrible things that were done to us as a people. And having developed that strategy, when the world was at sixes and ninths, trying to get personal protective equipment, and we, when all countries were running all over the world, overpaying for PPEs and what have you, going to suppliers all over the world, China, Europe, and being overcharged. We united once again and established an African medicine supplies platform where we all got together and started buying our PPEs at reduced prices. That too was phenomenal. And we did it because we became integrated and united. Whilst that was going ahead, the era of vaccines came to the fore. And once again, we united and put together a vaccine acquisition entity. No other continent put up a vaccine acquisition entity like we did. And we were able to procure and amass vaccines in the most effective manner. And that to me showed us that working together Precisely the point that President Ruto was making, we are able to achieve enormous feats and demonstrate to the world. And in fact, the world was quite surprised at the manner in which Africa was able to unite and address a pandemic like this. So if, if we work together, we are able to achieve much more than what we imagine. President Ruto speaks about climate change, where now our countries are being ravaged by climate change, droughts, floods, fires, pests, you name it. And it is this that, as President Ruto is saying, that we need to unite and work together and address even climate change. And out of it all, we should be able to see new opportunities, as President Ruto was saying, new industries, new sectors, and make sure that we enter those new sectors and excel in the most outstanding manner. Having just returned from COP27, held on African soil in Egypt, where the stark realities about climate change were demonstrated to all, as Africa and as African leaders, we made it very clear that our countries cannot afford a further rise in global temperatures, but we also collectively called upon the more developed economy countries to honor their commitments. And they have been making commitments over and over and over again. In COP21 in Paris, they made a commitment that they would be investing 100 billion or making available 100 billion dollars per year. They have not met those commitments. Now, collectively, a number of African leaders were there. All of us, one message, several voices, we said, we want them to address the loss and the damage that our countries are suffering from. And once again, Africa is showing 
great deal of integration of thought, effort, and articulation by saying to the world, we want you to address loss and damage. We are hardly responsible as a continent to the damage that has been done and continues to be done to climate, and we therefore want you, yes, to pay up. It is about time that the money is brought to Africa to enable us to address the damage they have caused to our climate. So, being here at this business forum, for me, and as President Ruto was saying, based on what we've been able to do in the past and the positions that we've collectively taken as a continent, it brings forward an important opportunity and message about what the business community should be able to do, working together with your various governments for us to search forward to address the issue of integration. It is about time that indeed Africa is more integrated. When we look, as President Rutas correctly said, when we look at other continents, especially Europe, their intertrade is up to 70%, and ours is a paltry less than 20%. And when you go into the markets that we have, as you go into our markets and when you pick up goods, I often begin looking where these goods are made. And I get appalled when I realize that goods that we could have made ourselves on the continent are imported from other environments in the world. And this is what we now need to live up to and address the issues that hold us back. What is it that hold, holds us back? And here I speak to us as business and also as government. What holds us back seems to be fear. Fear of the unknown, where we almost fear our own shadows and are worried about surging forward, confronting those shadows. Today, we were able to announce, for instance, that there should be visa-free travel between South Africa and Kenya, by Kenyans going to South Africa, that you no longer need to have a visa. <laughs> now, I'm able to say, what has always held us back, I was saying to President Ruto, is a fear. <laughs> we possibly, as well, as South Africans, we were afraid that by opening up the doors of South Africa to Kenyans, we are afraid that in will come all those undesirable elements that just want to transgress our immigration laws and so forth. And today we were able to say, let's ditch the fear. Let's open up South Africa to Kenyans to come to South Africa so that you can come and do what? And trade with us. You can come and do business. You can come and be tourists. Yes, you can come and learn. Many young people want to come to our learning institutions. There are many people who want to come, yes, to our hospitals. There are many people who do want to come and visit their friends and relatives. And today, that's precisely what we've done. Got rid of that fear and to enable us to triumph over fear. And of course, we've reached a very good agreement with Kenya that we are going to monitor this process. We are going to be hands-on and it's not going to be a loophole that we have opened for those who want to transgress immigration regulations and who want to come to slip into South Africa without proper papers and so forth. And Kenya has been bold enough getting rid of its own fear. It's been bold enough to say that there will be a return policy. 
those who have gone to South Africa wrongly will be returned back to Kenya. And that is very positive, and we welcome that. So the reciprocal nature of our dealings have been powerful. But I must say, President Ruto is action-oriented. There were two of us sitting together, and he looked me straight in the eye, and he said, President, this has to be addressed between the two of us. Let us take the leap. And he is very good at um, – he looks very fit, and I think maybe – I don't know whether he's a, he was a boxer or whatever – and was able to twist my arm. And uh, with that, we were able to agree that this is the new dispensation that we are introducing. It's courageous, it's bold, and it is aimed at improving the relationship between Kenya and South Africa and build that strong foundation. But more than that, it also builds trust, not only between the two of us as leaders, but also builds trust between the two nations, that we are two peoples on our beloved continent who can trust each other to do the right things and who can trust each other to trade with each other at a diplomatic level, at a political level. There is a great deal of trust that we can rely on. The other thing that holds us back is bureaucracy and a regulatory environment, which President has already spoken to. And we already identified a number of things that we can do to unlock the way we deal with each other and unlock unnecessary bureaucracy, red tape, and unnecessary regulatory strictures. And uh, uh, my sister, CEO of Transnet, was articulating that very clearly, that sometimes we have these photosanitary rules that only apply one way and so forth, and we do need to have great standards that we can all uh, apply to or conform with. The important thing, though, that was clearly demonstrated today, we've got a really good team of ministers and officials who, are, who have demonstrated that they are willing to do what is necessary. And uh, the Minister or Secretary of uh, Trade here in Kenya on his very second day in the job, immediately came to sleep in, in South Africa uh, to begin the process on, of unlocking some of the constraints and the strictures and sit down with Minister Patel. And they've made enormous progress just in a short space of time. So I really uh, applaud them. And the same applies to our other ministers. So we've got ministers on both sides who are determined to improve the relationship between South Africa and Kenya uh, so that we are able to capture the opportunities that lie ahead. And that behoves well for the future relationship between us as we open channels for you all as business people now, I'm particularly pleased that there are so many of you who have come here from both South Africa and here, and we hope that you will be able to move from the contacts that you are making to contract, because the opportunities are many. They are even unimaginable. And all, all we want to do is to open those opportunities, because our continent is hungry. It has a great appetite for industrialization, and it has a great appetite for new investment in factories, in logistics systems, and I'm very pleased to hear that Kenya is going to set up warehouses in South Africa for Kenyan goods that must come into South Africa. We welcome that, and we are open to that. Before coming into this meeting hall, President 
Ruto was ushering me through the various stalls that were here, and he's a very good salesman. He was, uh, uh, all morning he's been trying to sell me Kenyan tea, Kenyan coffee, uh, avocados, and all that. So as you see me, I'm full of tea as it is now, of Kenyan tea. So the opportunities are enormous. And uh, as he was speaking up the opportunities, I want to reiterate that indeed, we just see great opportunities. And opportunities that straddle between the private sector, opportunities as well as the public sector. Opening up the Kenyan market for both our state-owned enterprises as well as our private sector. But similarly, President Ruta, I'd like to say, we want to open up also South Africa's market for your goods and services and indeed for your public sector companies that can come to South Africa to do business. So in the end, it should be a two-way process. I was also particularly pleased to see a stall where medical products are also manufactured here which speaks to precisely what I was saying earlier, where we were able as the African continent to push the world to get us to manufacture our own vaccines and to push the world, the WTO and so on, where we said we want to be able to manufacture therapeutics and diagnostics as well. So it was a joy to see a company here in Kenya uh, that is already making that. We've had enormous breakthroughs. And as we make these breakthroughs as government, we are saying we want the private sector to follow in suit so that you notice and see all these opportunities that uh, can be capitalized on. Now, the Africa continental free trade area is another great opportunity. Despite the little hurdles that there are in place where we are supposed to get a few countries to unlock the full-blown implementation of the Africa continental free trade area, and we are going to do that. In our own neighborhood, we have to get Lesotho to come along, the country that you didn't want to mention. We will do so. And in your own region, you've got others. Now, imagine the two economies. And let's not forget that Kenya and South Africa, Kenya is a very big and vibrant economy in East Africa. And South Africa is a big and vibrant economy. So we link the two regions in the world. And I've often said we link with Nigeria, we link with North Africa, and the continent is our playground. And that's exactly where we want you as businesses to play. So the quest that we have and the dream that we have, and imagine we also started it during COVID, but we also immediately started saying we need to scale up. We can't be running after a number of countries around the world and say when we are sick, we want you to supply us with uh, with uh, vaccines and, and uh, syringes and therapeutics and so on. We've got to make our own. This is Africa's century, and we must capture it and demonstrate to ourselves and those who will come after us that we did take up the opportunities. And now we've already demonstrated that we can. We can make vaccines here on the continent. The agreement that we got the world to start focusing on is to say there are a number of countries on the continent. South Africa is one, Kenya is one, yes, Rwanda is one, Senegal is another, Egypt is another. We can make our own vaccines. Just open up the regulatory strictures in the world. And that we have achieved. We're now pushing for therapeutics and diagnostics. And I think we will succeed if you, as business people, demonstrate to us that you are willing, ready, and prepared 
to take up all these opportunities that we are making, they are opening up. So that's the question of fear. We must get rid of the fear that we have and the regulatory strictures we will take care of. So the opportunities are enormous and I'm really glad that uh, we can have this opportunity for me and President Ruto to come and hear your report. It's a very good report. It's a positive report and forward-looking. It enables us to unlock opportunities for trade between our two countries, and we will want to take further stop, uh, steps to increase overall trade. We already heard that trade can scale a billion dollars, and it can go even, between our two countries, it can go even further. And when we talk about trade, when I talk about trade, I'm not talking about one way. It's not only South Africa to sell. It's for Kenya to sell. I want to see Kenyan tea and coffee in South Africa as well. So we want to open our market, and we also want to open up investments. On the public side, President Ruto has already said, in housing, where, yes, we have developed a really good and special skill. We've built four million houses, and you need two million. We can work together. But in working together, we want also to build capacity to transfer the skills and the capabilities so that, as Kenya, you can also come and build houses in South Africa uh, in time to come. So it has to be seen as a two-way process. So if we can look at all this in a broad sense, we will find that the sky indeed is the limit. We've got endless opportunities. And on our side, we want you as the business community not to tire, to keep raising the issues that are important to you. You've got great access. President Ruto is accessible to the business community here. And if, as we were going around uh, the, the, the stalls, uh, nearly everyone was focusing more attention on President Ruto, forgetting that I'm a buyer of uh, Kenyan goods. They were focused, and I said, no, that is, that is a good sign because they look at him to unlock opportunities way back home. They look at me also to unlock opportunities. So both of us are accessible, are, are, are able to see how we can open up the opportunities and support you. So what I can say as I conclude is that we are here to support, to egg you on similarly you as business people take up the opportunity of having two governments, two governments that support you, two governments that want you to succeed, and two governments that are hungry, that are determined to grow our two economies. These are two strong economies in two parts of our continent. Let us work together. And that is what has brought me and my delegation here. And I'd like to thank you for being here and also for reporting to us as well as you have. Thank you very much.